So can you see the slides? Yes. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, uh, to share my views on tactile skin uh, technologies uh, for uh, particularly for robotics and medical applications. So uh, uh, before I start a brief introduction about, uh, about the IEEE Sensor Council as well as about uh, my own group, uh, IEEE Sensor Council, I'm here uh, as, a, as a distinguished lecturer for, for the council. Council has uh, 20, uh, 27 member societies connected to 27 member societies. And uh, through these societies, it is uh, also connected to almost half of the IEEE membership, which is about 300,000, uh, 50%. And uh, IEEE Sensor Council Flex journal is IEEE Sensor Journal, which is one of the largest journal of, of for IEEE. And its flagship conference is IEEE uh, Census Conference, which will be in Sydney next year. And this year it is in Rotterdam. We have also started a new conference uh, and uh, quite successfully running for the last two years. It is focusing on flexible and printed uh, sensor systems. And uh, today's talk will also have a lot of uh, work related to flexible, uh, flexible electronics and sensors. Coming back to, to uh, Glasgow, my, my group, Bendable Electronics and Sensing Technologies Group, what we try to do, we try to understand the sense of touch in humans and use this uh, knowledge to develop the technology for robotics. Uh, uh, as you see in this case, large electronic skin and some of these technologies through flexible and printable systems, then comes back, uh, uh, closes the loop and comes back to improve our lives through number of devices, which are such as, such as wearable devices. We have developed a range of uh, uh, tactile skin uh, technologies, or we call it sometimes electronic skin. Sometimes in literature, you will come across the term synthetic skin. They all refer to uh, the distributed sensors on flexible substrates. We have developed 3D printed hands with, uh, with embedded sensors in the, the 3D printed structure, large area tactile skin, CMOS based uh, tactile sensing chips, which we originally wanted to place on the fingertip, but because uh, the conventional electronics uh, is not uh, flexible, it's planar, we had to evaluate it finally on the palm. And that was actually the triggering point for my current research uh, related to flexible and printed uh, electronics. We have also, we also use uh, uh, latest materials, advanced materials for, uh, for the, the, the development of tactile skin. And in this case, this is uh, this hand, uh, this is the state of the art prosthetic hand, which is uh, covered with graphene based skin. Uh, in addition to this, we also work at the interface of real and virtual world, and that interaction is always through touch. So as an example, you see here, we have developed this uh, hologram volumetric display. It's a pseudo hologram, which can display 3D virtual objects. And uh, the interesting aspect is that you can interact with, with these virtual objects, either through gestures, as you see on the screen now, or you can interact by, by directly touching them. For example, on the screen, you see a globe, which is displayed and you can lift it. And when you lift it, you can also have some sense of weight or when you press something, you can feel, you can have that haptic feedback and you can feel uh, as if you are pressing, uh, pressing the object in, in, real, in reality. And that's something shown here. Uh, you have a push button. If you try to press it, there is uh, there is a mechanism which is uh, uh, connected to that. So it's it's an aero haptic mechanism. So you, through air, you can feel the pressure. An advantage, another unique feature is that you can, if you use hot air, you can also feel the temperature. So these are some of the some of the things that we we are doing. I will not take. Uh, uh, more time to introduce the group. There are several other things that we do. Most of the videos that I will present today, I'll use today, they are on group's YouTube channel. If you search best BEST underscore U of G, uh, which was written here, then you can, you can have access to most of the videos as well. But before I start today's talk, I would also like to acknowledge uh, the, the group. 
the work that group members are doing. I think uh, uh, it is their hard work that I'm going to, I'm just representing, I'm just presenting their work today. So here is the outline of the talk. I'll spend a few slides on uh, to describe why tactile skin or electronic skin is important, not just uh, for the robotics, but the future, how robotics is evolving and, um, and what are other potential areas where uh, tactile skin can, uh, can be useful. Then I'll move on to the second part would be the technologies, what solution exists today, what are exists, what solution can be explored in, in midterm or to long term. So various time scale as well as various dimension scale, which means large area skin to, to small uh, uh, touch sensors based on nano wires, etc. So I'll cover these parts and then I'll move on to the second, third part of the talk, which is uh, how this tactile skin or electronic skin is connected to health. So closing the loop, bringing it back to humans. So, and then I'll conclude this talk uh, uh, and present my uh, with a with a with a brief description about what uh, vision uh, for the future. So coming to the first part, uh, electronic skin or tactile skin is so important that it starts even when even before we see the world. Is the only sensory modality that you come across that you you are able to. Uh, uh, feel as you can see uh, a, a, the embodied interaction in this video, and not only this. If you, if you, in reality, if you imagine, uh, if you imagine this type of experiment that you see here, try putting your hand on the ice block and and grasp an object nearby. Very likely, the object you will not be able to grasp; it will slip out of your hand. You can see that it is slipping out of your hand, but you can do nothing about it because for, uh, for a short period, your tactile sensing, because your hand is now, you have lost your tactile sensing. And that underlines the importance of tactile sensing in our, in our real life. Coming back to automation sector, if you see uh, this type of cages, that's typical of any, any industry, uh, any uh, car manufacturing industry, where lots of robots are working in cages and uh, no human is allowed in this cage. And if by chance any human enters into this cage, we come across news such as the one you see on the screen, robot kills a uh, man at Volkswagen plant or, or uh, other areas where uh, robotic uh, accidents have taken place. Now we are moving towards industry four, we, your robotics is evolving and we talk about robot and uh, and human working together as a cobot as a co-worker now if that is the situation the scenario that robots working in cages it will not work robot and human they will work side by side and in that context uh, uh, when they are working side by side you need to have physical interaction and that physical interaction means the electronic skin becomes an important tool uh, that to enable that physical interaction uh, Coming to the, uh, what, uh, the, some of the other areas, uh, uh, on the left hand side of the screen you see some of the uh, areas which are pushing the research uh, currently. These include medical robotics, these also include surgical instruments as you can see in a laparoscopy uh, device. Currently there, are, there is no tactile feedback. Uh, and which means that inside, if a, if a tool goes inside the body, there is no way that a uh, surgeon can palpate can feel or feel the, the heart tissue. If, if such a tool is, is uh, covered with, uh, with a, a array of tactile sensors, then you can get tactile image, just like you get visual image. And uh, the, the diagnosis can be, can be or uh, interaction with the tissues inside the body will be much uh, richer. On the right hand side are the pull factors, some of the future technologies where touch sensing can be, uh, can be useful. This include uh, 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 human brain controlled interaction of soft robotics, as you see on the bottom right, where a elderly person uh, is, is shown in a, in a sketch, shows elderly person uh, playing with the, with the, with the grandchild. Uh, through brain control soft robots. But then in this case, you need uh, distributed pressure sensors to have a very precise control of these, uh, these robotic uh, arm, flexible robotic arm. 
uh, also connects to digital health. As you can see in the right center, a doctor interacting with the, with the display through touch and can also feel remotely through tactile internet or through haptic interaction can feel remotely the, the, uh, the condition of patient. And uh, also in, in, in case of retail sector, there's a huge scope of tactile sensing. Currently we just have simple, uh, you know, touch interaction is through touch-based switches, which just, just detects uh, the, whether touch is, uh, there's touch or no touch on the screen. But if you can also add uh, pressure uh, to this current touch screen, then you will be able to see, or you will be able to feel uh, the, the clothes that you buy online or things like that. So that would have a huge impact on uh, in the retail sector. So with these, uh, with this background, the next question is how we do, how we develop skin that uh, that can um, give us all these capabilities. And this slide shows uh, some of the parameters where we we uh, we we thought about our, 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 as, as the important parameters for an effective tactile skin. And when I say effective, I don't mean to have a bench top skin in, in the lab. It is uh, skin that can be wrapped around a robot or, or about an object and, and, and they can be made interactive. So it all depends on what we want to do. So there is a range of functionalities, there are a range of sensors or range of uh, touch sensing uh, parameters that you want to measure. So that decides what kind of skin you, you, you will develop. It also depends on the hardware, which has two components, mechanical or physical or electrical. When you talk about mechanical component, you have to look, uh, look for conformability, softness, stretchability, shrinkability, etc. There are body parts such as, uh, such as uh, here, when you bend your, um, your hand or joints, you, you get your skin is stretched. So in those cases, you need to have uh, sensors over stretchable substrates. Then there is an electrical uh, or electronic uh, hardware you need to have. You need to ensure the response from the, uh, from the sensors that, that are distributed over large area on flexible substrate. That response is fast enough so that uh, you can take a decision and the actuators can then uh, can implement those uh, uh, if, if it is an example of robot. And then uh, finally, the manufacturing related issues. You need to make sure that this is a manufacturable uh, maintenance is easy, it's reliable, and uh, cost, etc., need to be considered. So, um, and then you have to consider that these sensors are not uh, just uh, placed on rigid surfaces, they are placed in, they are uh, uh, embedded in the soft materials as we, de as we have in our own skin. And these are different type of sensors, not just one sensor. Skin is more complex than other sensory modalities. Um, as an example, if it is audio, you are just getting voice uh, signals. But in this case, in, in the case of skin, you have various other type of signals. You have uh, fast adapting, slow adapting, your temperature, your pain, and uh, and many type of uh, stimuli that that give us richer uh, experience in terms of interaction with the real world objects. So when you look at your our own skin, it has. Uh, and I'm looking, looking at only mechanoreceptors, the receptors which are sensitive to mechanical stimuli. There are four type of uh, receptors uh, that are shown on the screen and they are divided into two categories, slow adapting and, and fast adapting. SA on the screen stands for slow adapting and FA stands for fast adapting. So these are different sensors. Uh, slow adapting would adapt if you have a static or quasi-static uh, uh, stimuli then slow adapting uh, receptors they are more active whereas if you have a, a fast or dynamic stimuli then uh, the fast adapting are more active uh, and, and in real life we have a combination of both for example if you pick up an object such as if you pick up a mobile phone so at this point when I at the time of reaching the mobile phone these are all dynamic events but I, if I continue to hold it that becomes a static event and that defines what type of sensors will be used. Static, for example, capacitive sensors would be good enough, but if it is dynamic and you want to have a control in, uh, in, uh, in real time, then you have to look for piezoelectric because piezoelectric materials are, they, they are anticipatory in nature. So they, you can anticipate the, and you can take the response, uh, the, the actuators can be activated or controlled uh, based on that. 
and uh, uh, further on this, we we also need uh, uh, the electronics need to be looked into. The question today is, as I mentioned earlier, that we have planar electronics, and if we want to use today's electronics for robotics, then we have to redesign robots, mm -hmm. and we have to have all planar surfaces. But that's not what real world is. The real world is all curvy. All uh, you know, uh, there are. Uh, uh, places where you need to have stretchable material then and, and uh, so uh, the summary is that planar electronics may not be sufficient you have to also look at the electronics you have to change the way electronics is done so that it can conform to curvy surface surfaces and it can have it can measure all uh, wide range of parameters and these wide range of parameters uh, such as uh, shown on, on the left hand side you know, hot uh, to detect hot or cold object, to detect soft or hard object, to detect a surface texture, whether it's a glossy surface or a rough surface. And this can, uh, this, this type of electronics with all these distributed sensors must be also covered uh, entire body because uh, skin is, uh, is one sensory modality which is uh, very much distributed uh, and you can feel you can contact any part of the body and execute task based on that contact. It is not centralized like two eyes or two ears or, or one nose. It is uh, very much distributed. So with this also come the challenge related to data and energy. So uh, these, are, these are all parameters that one need to look into uh, to design or to develop an effective tactile skin. If you look at the uh, uh, on the screen, uh, the, uh, the example shown here for the mechanoreceptors. In the palm area alone, you have more than 5,000, you need more than 5,000 receptors. So there are two ways. If you want to read real, real time, you want to have, uh, then you need to connect each sensor with the two wires at least uh, to get the data. And then, uh, then of course, on that base, the data, you have to interpret the data and then take the action. But coming back to the hardware itself, having uh, 5,000 sensors on the hand and then 10,000 wires, you can imagine uh, what uh, uh, what uh, what kind of dexterity you will be left if you put 10,000 wires on your hand. So there are practical challenges here and this we call as wiring complexity. You have to also look into when you develop such an electronic skin, you have to also look into the issues such as routing of wires. How can we minimize the data so that it can be handled later on? So it's a big data problem. And it's also a problem related to energy. How do we power so many sensors and associated electronics? This will require distributed energy as well. Our skin is a classic example, which has all these features. It has distributed sensors, it has distributed computing, it has distributed energy, which we call a cell energy, and then all embedded in soft material and uh, compliant surfaces. So in a sense, it's, it's a computer. Uh, it's a sensitive computer, which is uh, flexible, which is compliant, which is soft. And uh, this computer is also quite distributed. It's not a, you know, a chip which has a large number of transistors on it. The chip is much bigger here. So coming to back to the, uh, the flexible electronics, what I mean here by flexible or conformable electronics, which I have given example in the previous slide is quite important or critical for, for the tactile skin or tactile based uh, touch based interaction. So it's, to me, the conformable or flexible electronics is uh, a different type of sensors, whether they are physical, chemical, optical, different type of sensors integrated on, on a flexible substrate, substrate that can bend, that can uh, roll. And uh, they are not just the sensor, but also energy harvesting, distributed and energy harvesting, distributed memory, signal conditioning electronics, all put together as a system. And possibly depending on application, that system can transmit the data wirelessly, or uh, it could be wired uh, uh, communication. So it, it, this depends on the application. Coming to the next part, uh, what do we need to do? I have highlighted uh, sufficiently the challenges related to development of tactile skin. The next question is, what, what do we do in terms of uh, development of tactile skin? And this section is, is about these solutions that we, we have been exploring um, based on what is available today based on, as I mentioned earlier, in midterm, what is possible, in long term, what is possible. So we started looking into various uh, directions, uh, and those directions are related to materials and methods, 
uh, how can we overcome, for example, challenges related to planar uh, getting electronics on flexible substrates? Electronics being planar, it's a huge challenge. Silicon, which is the uh, the critical, uh, the key material on which uh, today's electronic is realized, is is brittle. If you try to bend it, it will crack. So these are the challenges that we have been trying to overcome. And uh, we noted that actually there are many directions. Uh, both in terms of material as well as, as the fabrication strategies. Some of these are, are I'll, I'll discuss. So first example is bendable systems from existing known bendable technology. This is a kind of low hanging fruit. This is something that we can do quickly. Uh, when I say existing technology, I mean here the, the technology the, for, the, uh, for the electronics that we have today, planar electronics. Can we use planar electronics and yet get electronic skin that we need uh, for, for interaction, for robotic interaction with real world? And to that, ex to that um, uh, the example that we have, I, I, we, we started with this project, RoboSkin project, where we developed the, the skin for to cover uh, most of the body parts of the robot called iCub. And the slide on the screen shows iCub on the left, which is without skin, iCub with skin. Uh, uh, and uh, on the on the further right, I kept, uh, the skin is nicely packaged, which is also commercially available. In this case, we use flexible printed circuit boards, uh, which is not a new technology. It has been known for for uh, thirty more than thirty years. You know, our printers, etc., they use uh, on that brown color thing. That's a polyamide uh, ribbon, which has uh, you know electrical wires going. And it's quite flexible. Instead of wires, we now have, in this case, we have um, uh, the, tri the, the, the circular shaped capacitive sensors, and uh, there are 12 sensors on, in, in the triangle shape. Now, triangulation is an important technique which was implemented here in hardware. And this slide shows how, uh, why it is important. If you look at the concept of fuller map, it's very easy if you to cover a 3D surface. It gives an insight into how to cover a 3D surface. And sphere from the uh, from the fabrication point of view, a spherical sur surface is the is 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 most complex. So in this case, what happened? If you take the the projection on the spherical substrate and then you can you make a 2D layout, you can see that this 2D layout you can uh, you can divide it into several triangles. And that's the origin of triangulation technique when you talk about 3D imaging. So you can, with small or big triangles, you can make, you can construct any 3D surface. That knowledge the, the, from 3D, 3D imaging, uh, we brought that knowledge into hardware and developed the skin, which has, as you can see, the triangular patches with 12 sensors on each patch, uh, uh, each, each triangle. And there are 16 such triangles, they make one patch and which, is, uh, which also has one microcontroller and then that patch, uh, uh, the communication to the, to the central uh, process unit is through I2C communication. So the 12 here has a reason because uh, the chip that we got at that point, uh, it's the same chip that, that is used in iPhones. Uh, so capacitance, capacitance to digital converter chip, it was able to convert 12 capacitive points. That's why 12 sensors. So it's, it's limited by, by existing hardware. And that's why I said, whatever is available, let's try to use it uh, and, and develop skin that is needed in robotics. So on the top side, you can see all these circles. They are the one electrode of the capacitor. This was then covered with a soft material. And uh, the top side was, was a, a um, conductive fabric, which was grounded. So when you try to press the, the soft layer, the thickness will change and the capacitance will change. As a result, you know how much pressure is applied and you know the location because it's a, it's an array of uh, the, this array's location of uh, the, the each sensor is very well known. So this is the top side of the, of the patch. This is the back side of the patch. All wires were routed through flexible printed circuit boards. Uh, this is something, uh, this is uh, something, you know, a technology that has, that exists, has been known for, for a long time. And uh, the skin was then, because we followed the triangulation concept, uh, we could also develop uh, a sort of a generalized skin, which was not specific to one type of robot. Uh, different robots could be covered with, with that skin. Examples shown here are iCub. Uh, that's the, 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 the chest of the iCub. A, a, another robot, which is Casper, which is used to teach or train autistic children. 
a commercial robot now here. Uh, at that time, uh, Aldebaran, but now it's a soft, uh, uh, soft bank. So, uh, and shrink robotic arms. So various type of robots were, were uh, uh, covered with the skin and uh, uh, the, in different uh, sectors, the, this, uh, this was evaluated. And this is still used in many labs. So the project has, uh, is concluded. It was a European Commission funded project. And following this, it led to interesting new dimension within robotics before, you know, such large area skin was um, uh, most of the most of the research was around uh, around hand based touch sensors. So putting some touch sensors. So inter inter interaction was pretty much limited in terms of area with uh, with this type of skin. What has happened is uh, robotics field has opened up. Now people talk about uh, new strategies. Uh, execution plants with where large body contact uh, can be exploited for example if you if you take snake they don't have any limbs they rely on the body contact the, from the entire body and then uh, uh, that means uh, the the contact point with the, the the sensing that they have throughout the body it's it's that uh, becomes important so uh, this is the new paradigm that how robotics has uh, has shaped uh, has uh, focus has shifted um, by having uh, this type of large area skin. This example here in this video shows, uh, can you see this video, uh, Subhash? Uh, yes. Hello? Yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, this video shows the, that, that you can uh, have multiple uh, contact points at same, at same time. So instead of uh, the, just one touch or area contact and then you can also use this this uh, touch and vision strategies to to improve the robotic interaction uh, so on the on the screen here you can see the touch points so these are the touch points as you touch here so there's a 2d map here shown and this is the, the skin uh, on the eye cup but these guide of uh, the the off-the-shelf component this type of technology can also be used in, in many other areas not just robotics some examples are shown here so you know, for example you can stitch them on the on the clothes and then you can program these uh, these leds in such a way that they can match with the walking pattern or dancing pattern etc they can also be connected to rfids etc on um, on uh, on uh, on fabric sorry on fabric or on various other flexible subset or it can be directly weaved into the clothes so this in this case for example conductive fibers they are uh, they are shown to make rfid and that could be an example of uh, digital uh, uh, smart tags so there is a lot of uh, piracy so it could be used to stop those uh, those pirated stuff Coming to the next part is uh, is related to uh, what is available in, in the midterm. How could we use the existing technology? What can be modified so that uh, we have better solutions than what we have today? Uh, better when I say, if you look at flexible PCB, it's an interesting. We were able to cover a large area, but problem with that is that it covers only the areas where curvature is large. So I cannot put uh, this type of technology on the fingertip or uh, or, or the, on areas where the curvature is really small and uh, there are many applications where would you would need that uh, that type of technology too um, robot body is one example where you have you know a large curvature here for the hand but for the fingers you need uh, you know a large curvature small curvature for the fingertip etc so uh, in that regard uh, we also looked into can uh, the solution such as uh, how to make the current electronics flexible so the current chips are planar and the first step towards that is that we started working on thinning of those chips it's it's a simple example if you take aluminum bar it's uh, it's not flexible but when you thin it down slice it down to aluminum foil that you use at home or, or, or daily you use uh, for the food packaging purpose then uh, you can see how flexible that aluminum foil is so uh, the key is thinning of the, of the silicon we thin down the silicon normally it is 500 to 600 micrometer but we thin it down to about 15 10 to 15 micrometer and when you do that what you get is something like this so silicon on which you have electronics uh, it becomes quite flexible and some of the chips that i was presenting in in the previous uh, section 
they can then be they can be made flexible and uh, the triangles will be more flexible then so that is what i see as uh, as the as solution for uh, for medium term but not just that you know you need still need uh, electronics which is on large area which something can print and you can make it ultra flexible uh, and uh, as i mentioned large area is critical so chip is still restricted you have you are putting many devices on on a small area we need large area and for that we need to, we need to look into new solutions and one uh, solution that we are exploring is related to printing of uh, of these new material forms such as nano wires nano ribbons and nano membranes etc uh, uh there are two ways in which you can do this one is we call it transfer printing something that uh, that uh, john rogers from uh, now northwestern university they uh, they pioneered that kind of work and uh, the other is contact printing we are we are more or less uh, more into we have done some work on both areas but primarily focusing on contact printing so the difference between these two is that uh, you realize in case of transfer printing as you see here you realize uh, silicon on the silicon wafer or or other type of wafers you can realize these micro nano structures on the wafer all high temperature processing steps are done on the wafer then with with a carrier uh, uh, substrate such as pdms you stick them and you lift it because of van der waal forces there are there is a good interaction you will peel off these wires will come come to the they'll stick to the pdms and you can then transfer them again so after they are transferred then you can do rest of the the steps for making transistors some of these transistors can then become the sensors on the other hand contact printing is so this is sort of batch to batch process this is kind of stamping and that stamping can be done on large area i'll show you uh, i have animation after this slide which shows how it can be repeated for large area but the 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 the, the there is a problem here in, in, in not a problem it's a challenge and additional steps here which is uh, that you have to have a carrier substrate to transfer there are two transfer taking place and this is a batch to batch process so it's not like a roll to roll process where you can uh, you can directly transfer these nano structures on flexible substrates and this is what uh, this is uh, how we do it we grow nano wires directly vertically not horizontally as you see here and once they are vertical you can bring them in contact with the transfer the, the receiver substrate and you can define on the receiver substrate you can define areas where you need the wire you need these wires to stick and areas where you don't need them so for example if you have a disk plan for distributed electronics wherever you need transistor your sensor based on these nano wires you define sticky and non sticky areas uh, and you have a layout so you move these wires and you get nice electronic layer only on the locations where you want them to be so that's a very good way because it's fast because it's it leads to you know less material wastage compared to conventional electronics and eventually it leads to sustainable electronics which is another important direction not connected to the tactile skin but in terms it, it's very much uh, central to the technology current electronics leads to a lot of material waste and that eventually leads to huge electronic waste problem uh but printed electronics in this sense uh is is uh, far more attractive so you can you can see this kind of thing once you uh, slide these wires so you can see uh, you know the scheme shows wires are transferred on the on the flexible substrate this is one semi image shown here after wires were transferred and once they are transferred you can imagine this is like a like a electronic layer on which you can make devices so instead of thin thin chip which is kind of 15 micrometer here you get ultra thin uh, printed electronic layer which is less than 100 nanometer thick and there are some examples shown here uh, uh, where these type of techniques have been used to develop uh, devices and electronic skin so this uh, slide as i mentioned this slide shows uh, uh, uh this slide shows the none how these nano wires realize on wafer they can be transferred uh, to, to to obtain large area electronics and uh, we have done various examples i will not go into detail i'll i'll, I'll keep it high high level talk uh, if you were interested to understand about these works this is uh, a paper we recently published in advanced electronic material how after transferring you can get devices which are Uh, interestingly have performance as good as uh, 
uh, the conventional silicon uh, based electronics so and then you can see the large uh, number of devices they are wrapped around or around a cylindrical surface um, so uh, that's uh, that's how you get the devices and some of these devices can be converted into sensors uh, an example is shown here, some scheme, how you could connect a transistor can be made into other device, how you could connect them in different ways. So this, this slide shows the, the what I, whatever I mentioned in previous slide, if you have to look at a view, how you could, uh, this, this type of technology can develop in future in, in the form of roll troll printing of electronics. Uh, as an example, uh, one transistor and one memristor device is shown here. And these are the steps shown for the memory strand and the transistor. So you start with, uh, you define, as I mentioned earlier, you define sticky areas where you want them to be, these wires to be sticking. There's a cylindrical roll on which your wires. So once uh, these wires are transferred on the sticky areas, after that you can, if you want to increase the density of wires, you can repeat that step again. And after that you can deposit the dielectric we uh, we have uh, in the in the previous uh, slide i mentioned the work we have developed method where you can deposit high k dielectric at room temperature otherwise there are techniques such as ald uh, even if it is slow but uh, it is compatible with roll to roll and you can deposit high k dielectric so once this is done then it is it's a question of metallization there are printers available now we do have in lab super inkjet printer which uh, uh, which does one micrometer line and then and leads to high high performance uh, electronics. So this way you can develop electronics. And uh, this slide shows some example. So I am uh, I started with tactile sensing uh, in robotics and now going uh, more into technology. But I'll come back to uh, the application part again. Uh, this is course. So this is this is just to tell you that uh, the development of technology, particularly for the long term that I mentioned. Is quite a complex process. It starts, it really starts at nanoscale and you have to print and you have to bring it to the full system. System that will have distributed sensors, distributed energy, distributed computing, etc. So these are on this slide some example given how these, this technique can be used to print with different type of nano wires and you can get devices as well. And this was a paper published in Microsystem Nano Engineering and it was also outstanding paper of the journal. So uh, you can follow this technique to develop uh, large area skin as, as shown in this example. And uh, uh, although these nano wires, these are the nano wires, you can see these nano wires, these are shown to uh, lead to transistor. So transistor is important because uh, you can make a sensor from transistor, but also you can use uh, some of these transistors to make readout electronics. So that's why uh, our approach remains uh, uh, around, you know, making using transistor as a sensors. Uh, from the integration point of view, it makes uh, life much easier. So one scheme is shown here. You have the transistor drain source, and on the source area, you have uh, pressure sensitive material, which is this one. So as you press this one, the yeah, resistance will fine. change. It's good. It's yeah, yeah. There is a uh, guy called uh, Ravinder. Hi, can you please mute yourself? Okay. So they are they make electronic skin. Full body electronic skin. So anyway, I'll, I'll carry on. So you can change the resistance, uh, uh, and then would change the the current in the channel, or this kind of uh, you can have sensitive material placed on the on the gate area, and you can again modulate the channel current. So that way you can. Um, you can see in the background, my son is quite curious to see what's happening here. So he has been watching, um, and I do apologize for that. So, uh, so you can you can see uh, the the device, uh, the current will modulate in the in the channel, uh, and then it could lead to distributed computing and distributed electronics. So you can see you can have layers of uh, such such an arrangement. The top layer is the the sensors and the layer backplane, you can have electronics all printed uh, with the same technology. All right, so this is, uh, these are some examples related to technology, but then there are also areas where uh, you need to have really intrinsic uh, integrated sensing, actuation and computing. So some examples in that directions, uh, the previous uh, sections were mainly related to electronics and touch sensors, but let's go to the next stage, which is, uh, 
the skin is uh, the tissues in the the sensor receptors are in the soft tissues and these soft tissues are tightly coupled with muscles so if you look at our skin then it is also uh, in some sense connected to actuation so computation actuation sensing some examples in this regard are you can see here this is a, a unpublished work this is currently in review where you we have been able to uh, integrate uh, it is all distributed there is no discrete element it's throughout the the structure that you see it's a soft robot uh, i will not uh, mention what material it is so this is a material that is distributed but material distributed in in the elastomeric substrate in such a way that it also gives the sensing capability and we measure that sensing uh, 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 output from here and we are able to control the nodes so uh, we have also developed new methods uh, alternative method for skin uh, skin is normally uh, the electronic skin that i mentioned earlier is normally wrapped around the hand or or the outer surface but that is also subject to wear and tear and uh, in some cases uh, if, for example in prosthetics uh, that may not be uh, uh, desired so we have also developed new technology uh, multi metal 3d printing so we are able to print uh, both conductive face and uh, and the and the plastic uh, normally 3d printers they, they 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 print plastic but we have modified our 3d printer to also print conductive paste and together they 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 are used they, they we design the hand in such a way that you print you print the capacitive sensors as part of the structure as you can see this is the plastic this is metal between them you have dielectric and metal printed again and then you print plastic and and deeper you can also embed the electronics this is the scheme shown here and this is the completed hand uh, with, with with some tasks shown on the on the videos on the right hand side so uh, these uh, these phalanges that you see all phalanges they have passive sensors and the response when 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 a user when somebody touches the hand is shown also so uh, coming to the computing part i as i mentioned computing is an important element because uh, so much of tactile data you uh, you generate then you have to have local uh, computing and this is something that, uh, we do in here in our skin also the computation we don't transmit all the raw data we are collecting from environment we don't transmit it to brain it is uh, it is processed at various levels and then we we get uh, uh, much smaller uh, set of data so basically higher level decisions are taken uh, in the brain and this is based on the neuroscience studies so many studies indicate that this is uh, that this is happening so for example some studies also show that at the point of contact itself if you take the if you study the response from ensemble of uh, uh, the first spike uh, that you get from the from the receptors then uh, from the spike itself you can get the value amount of force uh, the location of force as well as direction of force which means one contact point you can already you have at the contact point you already started processing the data so in that in that regard we have developed uh, this uh, we are exploring the 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 approach neuromorphic tactile skin where we have uh, uh, on the screen that you see is, is is a simulated version but we have also uh, uh, implemented this in hardware and uh, some of this work is presented in frontier in neuroscience paper so what we do here is sorry what we do here is uh, uh, we we have developed uh, uh, instead of one gate as as shown in the previous slide the transistor has multiple gates and uh, these multiple gates can be then viewed as uh, as uh, you know multiple inputs that you get and based on the summation the, it's a floating gate also which does the summation of all the inputs and that summation takes place and uh, one uh, synaptic circuit is also connected to that to get the the overall activation to implement the activation function and based on that we can dynamically tune the weights of these uh, capacitors and that leads to uh, something similar to what happens in the, in the the processing in at the synaptic junction and the video on the right hand side uh, showed uh, uh, our implementation uh, of this through simulation in this case you have six by six capacitive sensors the neural network was developed and uh, for that model for this device was used uh, and uh, the capacitive sensors were connected to the the transistor multi gate transistor so this shows the this shows the 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 point of contact 
and then you can also see uh, how we get the uh, so this is the point of contact and then you can see when you when when the user uh, swipes uh, the the skin it also gives the the direction of the of the swiping so that was something shown here you can see this was the direction this this comes here so this is all about the skin that I wanted to highlight in context with robotics. There are several other examples that we have uh, uh, we have reported recently and are not included in the in this presentation because of lack of time. I suggest that you could uh, uh, go to our uh, web pages, our YouTube channel to see those videos. And if there are any questions related to robotics, then let me know. But for now, I will move to the next part, which is how this electronic skin technology could be connected to uh, uh, health applications. So uh, one example is uh, using it as a second skin, uh, something that our skin is not able to do, but we can integrate uh, uh, flexible electronics or tattoo-like skin on, on the body, and then we can measure physical uh, parameters which are otherwise not possible. As an example, uh, uh, if, you, if you consider the, the, in case of diabetes, people have to take frequently the blood samples to understand the glucose levels but if that can be replaced by flexible electronics um, and it can be non-invasively done then it will be a, a uh, breakthrough in uh, in uh, health sector so if you look at the uh, uh, body fluids such as tear and sweat uh, you will see that the analytes present in blood they are also present in sweat and tear tear has been actually uh, contact lens uh, technology has been uh, developed uh, to to obtain um, glucose level from tears uh, that has not gone too far but uh, recently alternative such as sweat based approaches have also appeared and we also developed uh, some examples here and one example shown here is graphene based form that was used to uh, obtain pH of sweat and it was then also integrated to stretchable antenna uh, basically, in this case, stretchable antenna is just to improve the conformability so that uh, user, uh, you know, body, it conforms to the body nicely and you get the, the sensor data. And it was the all data, there was no battery used here. All data was, uh, it was the NFC communication. All data was transferred to the mobile phone directly. And this, uh, on, the, on the left hand side, you see uh, pH values uh, in real time. So these are the pH values from sweat. So sweat pH is directly connected to glucose uh, and that's why we, we were measuring pH. Other area where this kind of sensing could be used, particularly the, the sensor that I mentioned, the, the sensor touch sensor and actuator together, could be in the area of rehabilitation. It, it could be communication between deaf and blind people. So uh, deaf and blind people, they normally communicate by touching them and there's a code uh, when you touch one finger or two finger, that, that kind of code, they communicate that way and uh, they, 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 they use also braille cells. But if, uh, if this kind of technology these, the can be, can be uh, used in a wearable form, communication can be remote communication between deaf and blind, which means no physical contact would be needed and yet you can communicate. In that regard, we have developed some, uh, some devices we call TechSec and this is a paper recently published. So this paper integrates uh, touch sensor and actuator together and uh, it is implemented in, in a sort of wearable glove where uh, uh, the sensor part will give you the uh, what is uh, other end person is feeling and actuator part from uh, what I feel will be, uh, will be uh, fed to the other person in the form of vibration uh, generated by actuator. So uh, we are also using some of these materials and, uh, and uh, electronics technology to develop uh, the solution for accelerated wound healing as one example shown here is glycine which is glycine is, is inter interesting material it's bio it's it's based on amino acids something that we have uh, in our body uh, sorry uh, amino group that we have uh, in our body and then it dissolves in water very quickly so uh, an interesting feature is that it is piezoelectric so that piezoelectricity leads to electro healing so uh, basically when uh, you press the piezoelectric crystal, it generates some charge and those charge uh, locally at the wound site, they uh, uh, help in the growth of uh, cells. And we have evaluated that in the lab. 
these are some examples shown here. This is beta glycine and chitosan. On the chitosan is also a, a, a this was a disposable substrate. So uh, and integrated on the on the piezoelectric sensors on the on the on the flexible substrate. And we also show that it can dissolve in in uh, uh, you know it's biodegradable and it, it dissolves as well. So putting that on the on the bandage, uh, you can you can think of uh, faster accelerated healing without any any electronics on the on the uh, on the bandage. But not just that, we have placed the electronics also on the bandage, and we have tested it for wound monitoring. So for example, uh, in this this case, uh, uh, we have developed a patch with NFC. Uh, it's a battery-less patch with NFC tag and uh, temperature and uh, strain sensor. So normally at the wound site you have uh, you want to measure the local temperature and the strain. Uh, stress is also another uh, means through which you can accelerate healing. So when healing uh, is taking place, the the strain values would change and you can monitor it. So that's one way. But uh, we have also implemented it to uh, to detect um, uh, the respiratory volume, and that's one area where we have connected this work to to uh, wearables for detection of uh, COVID. Because uh, respiratory uh, uh, expansion is pretty much connected, so if you are breathing fast or slow, uh, faster than normal, then you, uh, that's, that's one of the symptoms that you get. And the temperature, of course, is another symptom that you get from COVID. So uh, this technology we have also uh, connected to, uh, we have uh, tried to connect there. And this video shows the results. So there's a mannequin which is uh, connected to ventilator. So this is ventilator we developed in, our, in my lab. And uh, this is uh, recently published details are in a global challenge uh, journal. So that, that leads to expansion of chest. And you can see this is uh, the real time. You can get uh, the data on the mobile phone, both temperature as well as strain. Strain gives the measure of expansion. So that way you can, uh, and this is the sensor, strain sensor response. This is one cycle shown here. So that way you can use it for, uh, for other health applications also. So uh, this brings me to the end of the talk, uh, uh, at the last part, which is conclusion. So to conclude, I would like to say that tactile sensing is important for safe human-machine interaction. In general, for, uh, uh, for uh, you know, interaction with an animate world, any object that you, you think, uh, that, that interaction. And flexible electronics as a technology we chose, we developed uh, to, to obtain tactile skin. Uh, it's definitely one of the areas uh, where uh, we just, uh, uh, you know, advance the research in robotics, but also uh, is a disruptive area uh, for the electronics itself. So it will add new dimension to electronics industry, uh, having enormous impact in terms of uh, consumer electronics, aviation, space electronics, robotics, life science, lighting, military applications, telecommunication, and sustainability. Some of the examples I have presented, others example I've not because I wanted to keep this talk focused around the use of tactile sensor, touch sensors, various variant of touch sensors, strain, temperature, etc., pressure in context with robotics and health. So electronics manufacturing, I, I, I gave some example, manufacturing by printing, which is another important direction, a, a promising and cost-effective direction for high-performance flexible electronics. Uh, this may also include some hybrid technologies such as uh, using ultra thin chips or using organic material based, uh, organic semiconductor based electronics. So electronic skin technology could underpin advances in several areas such as bionics, healthcare, internet of things, smart cities, wearable systems. Some examples have been presented. So with this, I would like to acknowledge the support of uh, my funders. Uh, my group members uh, and funders, EPSRC, European Union, Scottish Funding Council, Royal Society and Royal Academy of Engineering, and many other collaborators that I work, uh, I collaborate with throughout the, all over the world. And uh, that's all. Thank you very much. If you would like to go see more details, you can see, go to website. That's my email or Twitter account. Uh, there's a TED Talk which summarizes uh, what I've presented and uh, videos are given on YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ravinder, for exciting talk and sharing a lot of activities, what your group is doing. So I think it's now open for questions. I have got a few questions here. I will uh, ask you and then I, I'll take any questions from the, from the participants. 
Yeah. So one question I have here that this uh, flexible sensors and electronics, basically when we apply some force is kind of generating some strain and that strain can also be a source of interfering signals. That's right. So how do you tackle this problem? So what we have done is uh, uh, basically what you're saying is, is the material have piezoresistive effect. So, uh, and that leads to uh, uh, variations in the output. So what we have done, um, we have characterized when, uh, when we develop these devices, we characterize them for various bending cycles. And we record the changes because of uh, any, any strain or because of any piezoresistive effect. So uh, through fabrication, we try to compensate them. We develop devices on the structure on the, along with the, the sensor, we also uh, make them. Did I lose you? Compensate is this type of effect. Good that uh, you're can back. you hear me? Yeah, you were lost in between. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that's so. Okay. I was saying that it is uh, it is the piezoresistive effect, and two two ways uh, quickly that uh, it can be overcome is one compensation circuits can be realized, or you can you can uh, fabricate the electronics uh, on the neutral plane, which does not experience strain. And other possibilities, mathematically, you can compensate. You develop the models. You study the various response under various bending conditions. Develop models and use a mathematical compensation method. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's good. That's correct. Uh, one one more question is that uh, so most of the sensor what you presented, uh, they still need some kind of power source. Uh, because we are applying some mechanical force, do you see in future whether we could extract energy uh, also from the sensor? So sensing, energy harvesting can be together. Any possibility do you see? Well, uh, that's interesting. I What I did not cover, into, I have a few slides where I was told I, I, uh, I could have discussed about energy autonomous skin. So uh, it's just that, you know, uh, one hour slot that we have, uh, there was no enough time, I, I skipped that part. But this is interesting, I mentioned about distributed energy. So there are techniques such as uh, you can use piezoelectric sensors, which actually uh, they are self-powered, so essentially they generate charge. Then there's a new research where uh, uh, triboelectric energy harvesters are being used as sensors. Uh, with they essentially generate, they are energy generators and you use them as sensors also. So that way you can definitely handle the energy issues. Okay. So some of these sensors, but some sensors will always require power. For example, capacitive sensors for their operation, uh, you have to have uh, energy. Good. So Thank we, you. We, we have developed a new technique and that paper uh, that is also, that is subject to an IP where we actually produce, uh, we, that's energy generating skin. That okay. does not consume any energy. All it does is it generates energy, which is then used by either for the electronics on the on the on the robotic platform or to move the actuators. And we have shown in that work that from farm area itself, you can generate sufficient energy to move uh, motors of of the hand. Okay, no, that that's good. So that Thank way, you. skin uh, skin offers. Uh, uh, unlike other sensory modalities, uh, skin because it is present on large area. This is in. Um, Normally we come talk about the challenges, but it also has an opportunity because it is large area exposed to, to you know, kind of uh, the ambient conditions which you can exploit to generate energy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we have got one more question that uh, in some of the sensor, especially like dealing with the capacitive type of sensors, uh, you have got different shapes. In some cases they are circular, in some cases they are diamond type. Is it totally application driven or you have got some kind of you know, criteria of making sensitivity higher or something like that? Well, uh, it, is, it is more about the performance of the sensor than the application itself. Of course, uh, some connection to application also because some applications require highly sensitive sensors, others will not require. So sometimes we do these surface treatments, etc., to improve the sensitivity. Okay. So we have got one more question that uh, what is the typical time it takes for the glucose level 
to get reflect in the sweat compared in the blood uh we don't have actual values but roughly we calculated it was blood takes about 13 minutes but sweat takes about 8 minutes so it was faster than blood the key problem here is that still need to be which still need to be resolved is the good correlation between blood and sweat and okay. that's where things are uh, are stuck i think there that's where a uh, lot of work is currently people are uh, exploring that yeah. and we are also doing with colleagues from uh, clinical sciences yeah uh, one more question that uh, usually this flexible sensor they are basically stress or strain dependent how do you make them selective for a specific application is it possible or what if possible how do you do that well as i mentioned uh, this relates to your first question you know piezo resistive effect in addition to the stress your strain also so we uh, one way uh, uh, sometimes you have to if you really want stress and not strain then uh, the easy way is to fabricate uh, not so easy it is also challenging to fabricate device on the neutral plane so neutral plane does not experience strain so uh, but from fabrication point of view this is challenging to it's it's quite difficult to uh, ensure that device is in neutral plane so in those cases you go to compensation circuits ah uh, okay uh, i've got another question uh, ravinder so this question is that have you worked on like suppose bear conductor for the printing of electronic full circuits and sensor on different surfaces combination of that have you or your group have worked on that well we uh, we do uh, printing in many ways we do printing we uh, for example i mentioned about uh, direct printing of metal etc and we use that for uh, various not just the kind of physical sensors that i was talking today we also do uh, chemical sensors uh, and uh, on different surfaces substrates pet pvc even uh, fabric uh, substrates uh, paper so we we have done a lot of work on uh, on this area yeah so answer is yes okay yeah no thank you very much i think that's all uh, all the questions and i would like to express my heartiest thanks ravinder for your exciting talk and also sharing all your research activities and also giving all the answer